Hi, it's Katrina. From a fairy tale castle in the mountains to a buried lost city, here are nine amazing recent archaeological discoveries. Number 9. Chateau de puy laurens this place is actually real. Located in the small commune of La Pradelle puy laurens in southern France, the castle of puy laurens is a medieval fortress and castle that sits atop Mount Ardu, a rocky formation that overlooks the Bolzane River Valley from 2,287 feet high. It was first mentioned in writing in 958 in a letter to the Abbey of Saint Michel de Cusha. The Benedictine Abbey occupied the structure until 1162, when it was acquired by the King of Aragon. During that at that time, the castle played an important role due to its position along the old border between France and Aragon, serving as a refuge for people fleeing from crusaders as they destroyed neighboring territories during the Cathar Wars. The Cathar Wars were also referred to as the Albigensian Crusades. The Cathars were a religious Christian sect in the region that challenged the authority of the Catholic Church, so the Pope sent armies to teach everyone a lesson. The Cathars were popular and rejected the entire church structure, so Pope Innocent III launched the Bloody Crusade, and this is said to be the beginning of the Inquisition. The castle became known as the last stronghold of the Cathars as it remained standing while other fortresses in the region crumbled. Because of its strategic placement atop a high cliff, enemies were unable to attack the castle using conventional weapons of the time. The structure still stands today, and those who are willing to make the arduous hike there are welcome to visit. Unlike some other castles, it's not fancy. In fact, it never was. Chateau de puy laurens had one purpose, and that was to defend its occupants from outsiders in a contentious border territory that saw on and off warfare for hundreds of years. Number 8. Treasures of a Princess The Kingdom of Silla emerged in 57 BC as one of the three kingdoms of Korea. It was ruled by several powerful dynasties for nearly a millennium before ultimately collapsing in 935 AD. While excavating in the modern-day coastal city of Gyeongju, which once served as the Silla Kingdom's capital in South Korea's Gyeongju, Saying province, archaeologists found hundreds of grave goods in the tomb of a Silla princess. Her grave was found within a medium-sized burial mound dating back to the 5th century. Inside it was a treasure trove of valuable items made from precious metals, including gold and silver bracelets, earrings, pendants and other jewelry, gold ornaments, a gilt bronze crown, a decorative silver knife, and more. The deceased individual's height and accessories indicate that the person is a female who passed away at a young age, and the value of her grave goods reflects her high social standing. The most telltale sign of her elite status is perhaps the collection of gold beetles that were buried with her, as it was customary to adorn deceased royals with these objects. Even if she wasn't a princess, the woman came from an aristocratic family and enjoyed a very comfortable and privileged upbringing at the very least. And now for number 7. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Gary Kuhn and Victoria Trojan Qureshi for their nice comments. Thanks so much for supporting this channel. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe to join the Origins Explained family. Number 7. Abandoned Amazon Villages Using satellite and laser technology known as LIDAR, a team of scientists from the University of Exeter recently discovered a vast network of over 35 villages shrouded in the thick vegetation of the Brazilian Amazon rainforest. The villages, which date back between 1300 and 1700, are located in what is now the state of Acre. All of them are distinctively arranged in mounds that are circular or rectangular in shape. A statement announcing the fascinating find explains that these circular mound villages are connected across the wider landscape through paired sunken roads, with high banks that radiate from the village circle like the marks of a clock or the rays of the sun. Each round village consisted of up to 32 mounds arranged in a circle around a central plaza. The expansive network of settlements, which is much larger than originally thought, is connected by dozens of roads, which vary in depth and width, and which researchers believe may reflect the builders' beliefs about the cosmos. These recent discoveries are just the latest among many left behind by soil sculpting societies throughout the southern rim of the Amazon rainforest. They were found as part of an ongoing project that focuses on the region's many pre-Columbian cultures and how they altered the landscape prior to the arrival of European explorers. Thanks to this advanced imaging technology, fascinating finds like this are happening more and more often. Otherwise, they might just have been lost to history forever. Number 6. Steel Before Steel Earlier this year, archaeologists were shocked to learn that the ancient Persians forged an early version of stainless steel as far back as 1,000 years ago. Stainless steel is a relatively modern metal. 
Starting as early as the 11th century BC, the ancient society forged alloys from chromium steel, which they likely used for things like armor, swords, and other weapons and items, according to a study published in the Journal of Archaeological Science in September. Prior to the study, scientists believed that chromium steel was a fairly recent innovation. And while it's true that stainless steel as we know it today was invented during the 20th century, the Persians developed a version that was not stainless and which contained less chromium, but was still surprisingly similar to the modern version. According to the researchers, this ancient steel-making process is the first known example of people deliberately adding a chromium mineral to crucible steel, a material that was made from melting pig iron, iron, ash, sand, glass, and other materials in a ceramic or metal container called a crucible. Evidence of high-quality crucible steel-making was found at the Chahak archaeological site in southern Iran, which was written about in medieval Persian manuscripts as a steel production hub. In fact, it's the only site in Iran known to contain evidence of this activity. Charcoal residue found in an old crucible slag at the site helped lead researchers to the unidentified ingredient of crucible steel. Referred to in ancient texts as rusaktaj, the mystery material appears to be chromite. The steel produced at Chahak is different from steel that was made in other regions due to its chromium content, making it a distinctly Persian tradition. By getting to the bottom of this mystery, experts will be able to distinguish ancient Persian crucible steel artifacts from those made in other parts of the world, such as India, Sri Lanka, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan, all which conspicuously lack the chromium found in the advanced Chahak steel. Number 5. Aztec Skull Tower Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History recently announced the discovery of a tower of human skulls beneath Mexico City. Along with this creepy discovery were a bunch more skulls of Aztec origin, all dating back to the 15th century. Archaeologists found the Erie Tower in 2015 while restoring a building in the center of the country's capital. Subsequent excavations revealed additional sections of the cylindrical structure, which measures 16.4 feet in diameter, as well as 119 skulls belonging to men, women, and children. These discoveries are thought to be part of a massive arrangement of skulls, known as the Huey Tzompatli. Spanish explorer Hernán Cortés and the conquistadores serving under him were terrified by the site when they took the city in 1521. It was found near where a major Aztec temple called the Templo Mayor once stood, at a time when the city went by the name Tenochtitlan and served as the Aztec capital. The Huey Tzompantli was built in three phases dating back between 1486 and 1502, with skulls that likely belonged to young male warriors, as well as male and female captives of all ages, who were possibly ritually sacrificed sacrificed, earning them a sacred status in death. Number 4. Ancient Gold Archaeologists from the Temple Mount Sifting Project in Israel recently unearthed a rare 3,000-year-old gold bead from Jerusalem's first temple period. While a bead may not seem like much, it has a lot of implications. The tiny cylindrical object measures just 0.16 inches by 0.24 inches. It has a hole in the center and is made from four layers of tiny gold balls arranged in a floral shape. While gold was valued in the ancient world, it's unusual to find objects made from the precious metal that date back to the first temple period, according to Israel Antiquities Authority archaeologist Dr. Amir Golani, who further explained in his own words that gold in that period was not refined and generally contained a significant percentage of silver. Golani added that during biblical times, Israel's gold was mostly sourced from Egypt, the Arabian Peninsula, and the Horn of Africa, although it sometimes likely came from the Mediterranean region. During this era, gold and silver jewelry was made using a process called granulation, which involved adhering tiny balls together in a two- or three-dimensional form. These types of beads have been found throughout Israel, with some dating as far back as the 13th century BC. Most are from sometime between the 12th and 6th centuries BC during the Iron Age. Researchers are unsure what the newly discovered bead's purpose was, but they believe it may have been worn by a priest or an important person who visited the temple where the artifact was found. Whoever lost it, it's been sitting there for quite a long time. Number 3. A Buried Lost City The buried Roman city of Faleri Novi, located roughly 31 miles north of Rome, is undetectable to the naked eye. Thanks to advanced ground-penetrating radar, archaeologists recently mapped the site without actually having to dig. They detailed their fascinating findings in a study published in October in the journal Antiquity. Faleri Novi is less than half the size of Pompeii and less standardized than most Roman cities, bearing a noticeably different layout from more well-known ancient sites. 
but it's impressive in its own right, with features that are more elaborate than researchers expected. An overgrown but intact one and a half mile wall surrounds the site, which was used mostly for growing corn and figs, but also contained areas for grazing, as well as a market, church, abbey, bath complex, theater, and a public monument. The city was also equipped with a sophisticated system of water pipes that ran beneath its streets and was connected to an aqueduct. The Romans built Faleri Novi in 241 BC over Faleri Veteres, a city belonging to the defeated Falisci tribe. It was abandoned during the 7th century. Non-invasive techniques that enable experts to look through layers of ground are helping to uncover ancient sites more rapidly than ever before, and stands to be particularly useful when it comes to exploring what lies beneath modern cities, dense jungle foliage, and in other places where digging is inconvenient or simply not possible. Number 2. Rare Roman Mosaic One of the largest Roman residences ever found in Great Britain is the Chedworth Roman Villa in Gloucester, England. The luxury home was built starting in the 2nd century and was expanded several times between then and the 5th century. During its heyday, it contained mosaic floors, two bathing suites, marble fixtures, and other obvious displays of opulence. The once lavish dwelling was abandoned during the 5th century when the declining Roman Empire left Britain. Over time, nature re claimed the site. The villa was rediscovered in 1864, and excavations continue to this day. All kinds of new things are being found. Recently, archaeologists unearthed the first known 5th century Roman mosaic at the site. Based on radiocarbon dating of charcoal and bone found nearby, it was created sometime after 424 AD, a time when most Roman settlements in Britain had already been abandoned. The mosaic bears an intricate guilloche, or braided band design, punctuated by flowers and knots. It is more worn out toward the middle, where it saw the most foot traffic, and is in better condition toward the outer edges. The discovery is helping researchers to better understand the history of the Chedworth Villa itself, as well as Roman life in the region. It also sheds light on the downfall of Roman Britain and the beginning of the Dark Ages, a period from which very little archaeological evidence and historical documentation survive. National Trust archaeologist Martin Papworth described the conditions of the time, stating, After almost 400 years, Britain had been lost by Rome. Units of the regular army and members of the civil service were either being withdrawn or no longer paid in cash, and their wages in the form of coinage ceased to be brought into Britain by the central government. This saw production decline, and the craft and service industries became unsustainable. Since Rome started to abandon them, people transitioned to subsistence farming as the Romans withdrew from Britain. The newly discovered mosaic reflects a more gradual decline than experts previously thought occurred, according to Papworth, who noted that it was created roughly a half-century after researchers believed the industry stopped. Interestingly, the mosaic is more flawed than those from earlier times, showing that by the time it was made, the pool of skilled mosaic artists had dwindled considerably. Number 1. Jesus' Home UK archaeologist Ken Dark recently published a new book detailing what some believe to be Jesus Christ's childhood home. Titled The Sisters of Nazareth Convent, the book analyzes the area beneath Nazareth Convent in northern Israel, where Jesus of Nazareth was supposedly born. The site contains structures from several historical periods, including a partly rock-cut early Roman house, a cave church, Byzantine and Crusader churches, and evidence of Roman-era rock quarrying. In 2015, Dark identified what's believed to possibly be Jesus' house in the basement of the Byzantine church that was built over it. Researchers theorize that the site's churches were deliberately placed there in connection with the first century dwelling, which was more or less forgotten about. Then, nuns spent 50 years excavating it starting in the late 19th century. Dark initiated a reinvestigation of the site and previous research in 2006, during which he worked to differentiate structures between different construction periods. You're not going to find an inscription saying that this is the house of Jesus, he told CBS, but Dark is fairly certain he's found the right place. The house is well built but typical for its time, according to Dark, who said it's not pitifully poor, but there is no sign of any great wealth either. It's very ordinary. Today, the dwelling sits beneath the Sisters of Nazareth convent, and Dark admits that his suspicions about it being Jesus' childhood home by no means constitute a conclusive case adding that there may be no possible way to ever prove whether Jesus really lived there or not, even though all signs point toward it. Thanks for watching! What was your favorite discovery? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to subscribe if you are new here, and I'll see you next time! Bye!